Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the top 10 tips for scum version 0.6 and I'm just quickly going to give you all the information that you will need to survive in the current version of scum and to cut out all your frustrations and anything that you guys are struggling with these 10 tips will help you to simplify scum for you and help you to start enjoying the game instead of struggling with the water and the food and the bleeding and the injuries and the weight that you're carrying on you and everything like that okay first place that we got to start at is with the character creation so the best build you can go for is the standard three points on everything okay if you don't want to complicate it for yourself just stick to three points right through you don't have to focus on anything down here Okay, this is your junk size and you can even start with a bigger junk size because i've got the supporter pack but we're not focusing on that the reason we start with five intelligence is because that's the only skill that we can't level up in game okay and then the reason that we um lower strength and constitution is because though these are the only two skills which we are going to level up naturally so if you've got a good diet or everywhere you walk and everywhere you run and everywhere you drive you're going to be leveling up strength and constitution simultaneously and then with dexterity um you're going to level that up by losing weight by having by having a bad diet or calorie deficit okay that's why we go for five intelligence now at strength constitution you can do whatever you want okay it it really doesn't matter matter to me i basically go for uh, medium melee weapons and then i like to start with basic archery because archery is just overpowered at the moment and then i like to go with medium running and then basic endurance and then here i like to go with um medium stealth and then whatever you want to do medium stealth is very important for megs and puppets and not being detected okay but then after that um it really doesn't matter okay basic driving basic motorcycling basic thievery you can level all these things up in game guys so it really doesn't matter with intelligence what's important is that you want to take uh, you either want to do this okay so you either want to do this just want to put that to medium and that okay so that's your one choice advanced engineering is going to allow you to craft everything in baseboarding all the ammo it's just going to help you a heck of a lot okay or you can go medium and put this um to medium and take basic basic medical i like this a little bit more because i can level up engineering safely while i'm ba building my base okay by the time that i've built a massive base my engineering would have hit advanced already and i'm going to be leveling up survival while cutting down trees the medium awareness is quite powerful at the moment because it allows you to, to, to um um get better loot okay and hunt animals and cut out ambient sounds so you can focus you know that you can focus down your sounds awareness awareness is definitely much better than it used to be guys and then survival is important so that i can have a passive compass with north south west and east without crafting a compass so every time you die you'll be able to navigate the map a lot easier and then with medium engineering you'll be able to um, create all the base building elements right from the start you just won't be able to craft all the ammunition or other small finer things but like i say you'll be able to level it up and then you at least you've got basic a basic medical skill okay that you don't totally suck at it okay so that's tip number one okay tip number two boys and girls i don't care in how much of a rush you are okay not everyone has the time that i have to basically craft a spear and a bone arrow and a backpack and a quiver and 15 arrows okay i don't so i don't really care if you if you um want to craft all the basic equipment that i usually craft in my videos or if you just want to do this and this is all i expect you to do um craft a stone knife with two stones that you get from stone piles and then cut down one bush and then please just just craft a spear okay that's all i want you to do doesn't matter how little time you have 
craft a spear. Every time you die, craft a spear. Okay, a spear is going to save you a heck of a lot of frustration. Basically, it's just so you can you can defend yourself. If you run into a puppet, if you run into a player, if you run into a wolf, and let me just demonst demonstrate it for you. I'm gonna just spawn in a puppet, puppet quickly. I'm gonna spawn in a random puppet, guys. Um, just to give you a example. Hopefully, it's not a suicide puppet. Okay, so here's a random puppet, okay? If if this random puppet is at my loot that I want to get to, okay? Then I've got the spear. I've got the spear to kill it. If I run into this puppet in the wild, I can kill it as well. Okay? Helps a heck of a lot. And then, I might see my ass here, but I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you an extreme example. Uh... Uh, <laughs> with the wooden spear, really, Elithias? Yes, with the wooden spear. <laughs> okay, then use your small, your your small, uh, your stone knife to cut up, uh, cut it up into rags. Hopefully, you haven't got multiple bleeding injuries. Okay, and then you can just, goodness gracious, then you can just um, treat, you know, treat your treat your injuries. I'm probably gonna die, guys. I'm giving you an example. It's just so that you can handle everything. Okay, next step. In case you guys were wondering, yes, I did survive with 1% health, okay? I did survive that wolf fight with 1% health by just having the stone knife, cutting up my, you know, cutting up my rags. I could have made a better spear that would have helped me a lot with two stones, a long stick, um, tree bark rope, which you can craft out of five small sticks, okay? Then I would have had a little bit of a better chance. The thing that you want to do with the wolf is hit it until your stamina reaches about 50%. Then you want to move back because the more you run out of stamina, the slower you're going to be. And that's when he's going to kill you. As soon as you can't stab him fast enough to keep, keep him staggered, he's going to be able to kill you. Okay. So get your timing right move back all the time, try and sustain your stamina, okay? And then block. If you know he's going to hit you, block. I didn't block there once, guys. Block if you know he's going to hit you, okay? Block, hit. Block, hit. It will make you survive longer. Okay, tip number three. Okay, tip number three, boys. When you're bleeding, when you're bleeding, when you're injured, stop moving around. Stop moving around. It will, it can tear up your, it, these are basic injuries, but if it's worse injuries, if it's a C4 injury, just by walking, you will see that this bar goes down. As soon as it gets here, it will, it will tear open the wounds again and you'll be back to square one. Okay. So if I had serious wounds, because I've only got 3% health, if I don't relax now, okay, then I could have opened up those wounds again and then I'll definitely die. So do yourself a favor and lie down, okay? The reason I'm telling you to lie down is you'll see it by healing speed. You're healing at 1.048, okay? That's the speed at which you're healing at. But as soon as you sit down or lie down, doesn't matter if you sit down or lie down, okay? Doesn't really matter. Then you're healing for 1.8, almost double the speed, okay? And that's going to help you a heck of a lot to get into the get back into the game quicker okay i know it takes a little bit of patience but it saves you a ton of time over the long run okay so when you get hit sit down relax just relax breathe okay breathe if you rush it you're gonna get frustrated 
September 4, guys, we are still the same character. Okay, our last injury is being healed. We're back to normal. We're going to gain all our stats back. Now you're going to ask me, Luthias, how do I deal with this cold, with this freezing thing around me? You just jog, guys. Just move around and you'll get rid of it. You can just jog, boys. You can just jog, okay? And it will remove the hypothermia, okay? Just don't stand still. That's all. Don't stand still. Keep moving around. Um, you can make a fire if you want to, but I mean, I'm not going to run around with a torch in my hand, okay? So you can just throw the torch away. Just keep jogging and you're going to get rid of the coldness, okay? The other two problems that you're going to sit with is basically thirst and hunger. So let me show you how to deal with that. Tip number five, guys, is water. Okay, now, very important with your food and your water is the speed at which you are using it. The speed at which you are using it is highly related to these scores right over here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six levels of action difficulty. And it is indicated by your stamina bar down there, right here, just look here on the screen, you can see there, there's a green little bar next to my stamina. That green bar is showing me passive. I'm not doing anything, so I'll, if I just stand still, I'll be gaining one stamina per second, and I've got a stamina pool of 55, okay? Now, if I go and sit down, the green little bar goes away. Now we are in a resting phase and we are going to gain back our stamina at 2.5 stamina units per second. So as soon as you lie down or sit down, you are regaining your stamina at 250%, the normal speed. Okay, so that's number one and number two. Resting and passive. Okay, then we get into the other two, effortless and tiring. Okay, so as soon as we walk, okay, as soon as we walk, that's effortless. Okay, depending if we check, if we were going up a hill, it's more difficult. If we're going down a hill, it's less difficult on us. Now, if we jog, we're going into the tiring phase. Okay, and if we sprint, we're going into the intense phase. We're not, that bar isn't going to the max because of the weight that we are carrying that we are carrying okay and you will see now that the reason i've got these items on me is just to show you how quickly you can go into the exhausting phase because i can only carry 15 kilograms and even if you took three strength you can only carry 18 kilograms so as soon as we go past our carry weight if we carry more than what our carry weight is allowing then when we sprint, we are going into the exhausting phase, okay? And those are all the phases. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six phases. Phase number one. Phase number two. Phase number three. Phase number four. Phase number five. Okay, and then if I take this off me, guys, even if I sprint, I'm not going, I'm not hitting the exhausting phase yet, okay? I'm not hitting the exhausting phase yet, but if I put more weight on me, then I'm allowed to carry, then I'm going to hit the exhausting phase very, very fast. Okay, and if I put more, a lot more weight on me, that's not a lot of weight, guys. This is 21 kilograms. When you fill up your backpack, that will add up to more than 21 kilograms. Your bow weigh, weighs something. Your, your weapon weighs something. Even the quiver weighs something. All your clothing has a certain weight. Okay, and if you run with all of that on you, you are going to be in the exhausting phase all the time. And then look at how fast your water is going down. Okay, that's the milliliters. Look how fast the milliliters are going down. Okay, because you're in the exhausting phase. Very, very fast. Okay, 
and then your food will go down uh, naturally as well. But the more clothing you have on you, um, the more body fat you have on you, and the more weight you have on you, is going to crush your performance score. And your performance score is related to your muscle mass, your body fat, and the weight load that you have on you. So we can see we are only at a 59% performance score, okay? But as soon as we drop these three items, now we're, now we're at an 88% performance score, okay? And if we drop all the other stuff on us, we'll probably, we'll probably be much higher, okay? So that's what crushes your character. It's not really the fact that you're um, running, it's the fact that you've got so much weight on you. Now, when we are jogging, when we are jogging, okay, then we are just entering the, the tiring stage, which means we can jog forever and now look at our water. Okay. Our water is go going down a lot slower, but we can carry this on. For a lot longer okay and uh, the the water consumption has a lot to do with how hard we pushed our character now but one thing you can do to recover your water okay this is going to be tip number six one thing you can do to recover your water is when your stomach is empty drink 10 times really really quickly or no, not, not 10, about eight times. Drink until your stomach is full very, very quickly to regain this water much quicker. But you're going to be peeing a lot, okay? So let me just drink a lot of times so that you know, I regain my water much faster. And then I'm going to show you the correct way. The way that we are going to do it now is we're in an emergency phase. We haven't got any water. We're not willing to wait for our water to build up slowly. So we just, we just want to rush it. Okay. So I'm going to drink eight times quickly. Okay, guys. So eight is going to be the maximum. As soon as your stomach hits 90%, it's going to give you a warning. Okay. That your stomach is full and then it's just going to stabilize itself. So although we've drank eight times, look at how fast our bladder is filling up. Okay. You don't ever want to drink more than three times. Okay. Because your body can't absorb more than 400 milliliters of water um, per session. So you drink three, you drink three times, you wait until your stomach empties out and your intestines start lowering, then you drink three times again. And that will give you a constant water source. For now, we are rushing it. So our water is going up really quickly, but our bladder is going up really quickly as well. So we're going to have to pee. Heck of a lot. We can't really focus on doing anything else now because we are going to have to pee about every two minutes. But at least our water is building up much faster. Remember when we were running, how fast we were losing the milliliters? Now we are regaining those milliliters a heck of a lot faster than what we've spent it. Okay? So this is the fastest way to get your water to wherever you want. And if you don't want to do this a lot, push your water to 200% if you, if you guys want, okay? It doesn't matter. Push your water to 200%. And remember what I told you guys about your your um, constitution and your strength will, will naturally go up. Just because we're jogging, okay, our constitution is going up. And... Our dexterity is also going up because we're in a bit of, because we're in a bit of a deficit. Okay, just because we're in a bit of a deficit. But yeah, as soon as we add some weight to our character, then we're going definitely going to be adding to our strength. And then let me just check here. Put some rocks here on, on our on our guy. Look how our backpack is filling up, guys. Isn't that cute? Look at our backpack is filling up. Okay, so as we st as soon as we start running with some weight on us, we are going to be leveling up our strength. You can see our strength is going up there. Okay, our constitution is going up majorly because of the weight that we've got on us. And our dexterity is going up because we're in a bit of a calorie deficit. Okay, that's why I say, um, again, we have to pee now constantly because we pushed that. But yes. Just by natural playing, you're going to level up your strength and your constitution 
your dexterity is going to be a bit tricky. You don't want to eat too much because if you eat too much, you're going to gain weight and that's going to be negative for your dexterity because if your hold control is raised by a calorie deficiency, losing weight, is lowered by a calorie sufficiency, gaining weight, okay? But now we go here and it says raised by proper protein intake and executing actions under a load, having weight on us. Lowered protein deficiency and loss of muscle mass. So maybe we can trick it. I'm going to try and do that with my character. Maybe I can just keep my protein at a certain level and then have my other, my other nutrient values lower to trick my body into thinking that I've got a deficit. Okay. But this is how you're going to get your water back a lot faster. Okay. So let's just see where our water ends up after we've drank eight times. And I'm just going to be peeing in the meantime. Okay, guys, by just that fast drinking method, we got up to 100% water. The reason that you never want to go above 100% energy or above 100% water is because your intestines, if you go above 100% energy with the food that you're consuming or above 100% water with the water you're consuming, your intestines are going to fill up a lot faster. Okay, so you, your body is going to be dispelling it a lot faster. You can do it for having access but your body is going to get rid of it a lot faster. So if you always jog with 100% energy or water, you'll see that it goes down at a certain rate. But if you push both of these to 200% and you, and you jog, you will see that it's dispelling it much faster. Your body will always say um, it's hungry when your energy drops below 50% or your stomach falls below 10%. Okay, either of those two. But you don't have to worry about it until it reaches certain phases, which is probably going to be dangerous. But it occurs when the stomach empties to 10% and energy falls to 50% or lower. Okay? We can fix that quickly by killing a bird and cooking him. Okay? But this is the right way that you want to do it. So you want to drink once. Twice. three times doesn't matter if you've got a water bottle with you just drink um three times it's going to be more than you actually need you actually just need two drinks because that's going to give you the 400 milliliters that um your body's going to absorb on its quickest but i'd give it an extra extra little 200 milliliters and if you get the small water bottle that's actually perfect because it's just going to give you 500 milliliters per drink and if you get bigger bottles or a canteen, you can stop when you've seen you've consumed 500 milliliters. And now when we're jogging, because this is going to go down slowly, you can see that even while we're jogging, our water is still going up. Okay. Which will enable us to enjoy the game and not worry about our water and not really worry about our bladder. Because the, the fact that we just drank three times is not going to let our bladder fill up quickly. And it's going to counter the effects of losing water because we're doing difficult actions. Like even if we sprint now, okay, the water's still going to go up. So we can do a lot. And this is going to take some time to um, run out of our system. And by the time this um, is done and our stomach is empty, you know, we get the stomach warning. Then we can just drink water again. Okay, so that's the water. Tip number six is... You shoot a bird, okay, with a bow and arrow, or you wait for him to land, and then you can eat him, okay? You can eat him raw, but that's going to um, make you sick. So all you do is you um, craft a little basic fire, which doesn't take a lot of effort, and then you just put the meat closer to the fire until it says hot and raw. As soon as it says hot or it makes a sound, you know that it's cooking, and then you will just wait for it to be cooked or slightly cooked or overcooked, it doesn't really matter. And then you can eat it to start um, replenishing your energy. Other options to replenish your energy is, of course, the bushes, okay? There's various bushes that um, gives you food, but not a lot of food. But there are bushes that gives you food, okay? And you get broken down stumps like this, that if you search them, um, they, can give you, they can give you small little sources of food which 
I don't really use, okay, because um, I can get to areas where I can get proper food. And if we're talking about proper food, let's go look at proper food. Okay, guys, so around every town or around most towns, you will get these open lands with various things on them. So this is sunflower, okay, where you can get sa sunflower seeds from. So this is one source of food. You're just going to have to search them. Okay, everyone in the game has to do this. Search various various um, points of them to get the food sources. Or you can come here and get some corn. Okay, and don't worry how long it takes to get one. You only need about three um, to fill your stomach up a little bit. And then you never want to eat food below 75%. Okay, you never want to eat food that's lower than 75% or 70%. Because that's going to, when you eat it, it's going to repulse you, okay? Any food below 70 or 75% is going to repulse you. So let's just get rid of these unnecessary stones here. And let's see how quickly we can get, these are official loot settings, okay? Let's see how fast we can get um, three corn quickly. Okay, so now we're going to eat three pieces of corn quite quickly. Okay. And it does also say that if you rest, your body processes the food a lot quicker. Okay, so if we go in here and we look at how fast it's going up. Okay, the, our calorie burn is going down, of course, because we're not doing anything. Our calorie burn is... Burn rate is only 80 calories per hour. Our reserve calories are going up slowly but surely. But if we go and lie down now, then of course our calorie burn is going to go down. Okay, so that we're not using calories while we're trying to regain them. And now it's going to hit 50% quite quickly because we're resting. So it just helps us to regain those calories quite quickly. So eating at night when your character is going to go sleep or eating when you don't really want to run around is always a good idea. And you can see that water, that water really, really helped us. Okay, our bladder is full. We, we will solve the bladder problem, but we're not hungry anymore because we hit 50%. Okay, so now that's sorted. Let's eat quick. Let's pee quickly. Let me show you guys the other water sources. Okay, guys, you can either kill the birds um, when they land, which is if you stand still or if you just look at where they land, you can wait for them to land, stand still, and not spook them. Or you can hit them out of the air like I just did. Okay, and then you chop up the bird. And chop it up again. Of course, you are going to get feathers from it, which always helps for using it on your arrows or your crossbow bolts, because you need feathers to make crossbow bolts. Okay, so feathers, feathers are always useful. You can just stack them like that, and then you've got your two pieces of meat. And if you're really, really desperate, you can eat the meat, okay? But the meat is going to repulse you. There is repulsing you. Okay, but if you're extremely, extremely desperate, you can eat a little bit of raw meat. Okay, just don't let it go, don't let it hit full. Okay, so I can cancel eating it now, put it back in my backpack, and it, you know, um, it is helping us a little bit. But I don't suggest eating raw fruit. Rather go cook it. But that's how you kill a bird. Let's go look at the next place where you can get food. Okay, survivors. A big part of your food source is... Um, is these little shops inside towns. And if you want to deal with puppets, just craft a 20-pound bow. Okay? 20-pound bow is more than enough to deal with any puppet threat.
okay just a 20 pound bow guys if you're struggling with melee weapons let's let's call that tip number seven if you're struggling with melee weapons j just craft a 20 pound bow okay it staggers them and you kill them really really fast and then you just and don't kick them guys don't kick them to get back your arrows i'm going to show you why bonus tip bonus tip um here's my shoe 64 percent if i put down put away my bow like you guys like most people do and i kick him 59 percent okay i'll get my arrows back this way but my shoes are going to get destroyed and then my shoes aren't going to protect my feet anymore and i'm going to get negative effects of that so you did see there was butter in here okay which isn't great for your diet but you can hold control on it it will tell you it's giving you fat it's giving you saturated fat it's not giving you anything really healthy and it's giving you vitamin a it's giving you vitamin a and that's about it okay you can use it to cook certain items but not really worth it um you know health wise and then we go here yeah, spices is giving you carbs and dietary fiber but again you know eating you know eating spice mix is not healthy okay even if even if this is telling you to eat spices and stuff spice mix okay it's not healthy boys there's natural ways to get it okay there's natural ways to get it so this is your fir first food resource you'll get various kinds of foods in here okay police station is always where you get the starting military gear not the starting protection gear pistols shotguns smgs you're not gonna get um, military gear in there you're gonna get police gear and then these double story houses is your second source of um food you just come up here every most towns have got them okay then you just press tab to see if there's anything on the shelves okay this one's a bit empty but you will get things on the shelves there's boxes to search things to search here but yes every town has one of these okay and the main purpose of them is food okay and of course a little gun safe where you can if you're lucky uh, uh pistol spawns in there okay so there's other reasons to come in here except for the food there's various um sources of loot okay and again there you get um here at the bottom you get food as well okay which you can pick up so this whole this whole place is basically meant for food and then that shop that you saw there was meant for food and that's it so the farmlands and the little shops um gas stations uh, these double story buildings animals even bunkers 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 can give you mre bags and stuff like that okay and then the co cooking is a big part of the game now as well because now that you have to cook your food you know all this all this stuff can help you a lot as well okay so that was tip number six a long a long tip and then the other tip is how to kill puppets just use a bow boys just use a bow or you can you can you can use a melee weapon but it's uh, you're gonna struggle a bit with a melee weapon especially when you face multiple targets you know but when when you when you're using a bow then multiple targets isn't that hard okay okay you just need you just need a little bit more arrows but you can always finish them off then okay you can always finish them off then so tip number eight let's move to tip number eight tip number tip number eight boys if you are carrying loot on you like you usually do okay we all know you guys like carrying weight if you're carrying too much weight on you bury your loot okay bury your loot let's make that tip number nine bury your loot craft a crate okay craft a crate um on the grass or in a hidden spot okay so 
Okay, I'll show you guys that down now. Okay, I'll show you guys that down now. But if you're carrying weight on you, it doesn't really matter what you drive. If you are lucky enough to find a vehicle, which is quite difficult on official service, that's why you need to join Survival Evolved, uh, hosted by Luthias, because we've got double the amount of vehicles, just to save you guys a bit of time. As soon as you drive the vehicle, and you hold sh um, Shift C, you will see that you are Okay, now I'm learning something as well here. We've got weight on our back. We press shift C. We are not gaining strength or constitution. Okay, so it looks like a quad is effortless, boys. It looks like a quad is effortless. Sorry, I've, be, I've mostly just been driving dirt bikes. So it looks like a dirt bike takes effort. Because when you're driving a dirt bike, it's using strength, you're building up strength and constitution. Not only are you building up your mo motorcycling skill, not only are you building up your motorcycling skill, while you're driving, you'll see their 30 XP, 40 XP. Not only are you building that up, you're building up strength and constitution depending on how much weight you're carrying on you. Okay, so I'm driving I'm driving my motorcycle everywhere, my dirt bike, because it's leveling up my strength and constitution. So I'm killing three birds with one stone. That's quite sad. That's quite sad for the for the quad drivers. Looks like it doesn't take any effort um, to drive a quad. Ooh. Let's just make sure, boys. This shouldn't take any effort. Yeah, this doesn't take any effort as well. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so glad I've got a dirt bike. Oh, man, I'm so glad I've got a dirt bike. Okay, boys, the dirt bike takes effort. The other vehicles don't take effort. If you've got a problem with that, yeah, talk to the developers. I don't have a problem with it. A dirt bike does take effort to keep upright. So, yeah, that's how I'm killing three birds with one stone. Just know that if you're sitting in a quad or a, or a vehicle all the time, you're not exercising, okay? So, do yourself a favor, even if you've got a vehicle. Every day, just go out and jog. Just go out and jog. Okay? Check there. Plus three, guys. Plus three constitution per day. That is freaking fast, man. But it's not... It's not... It's not that fast. Okay? You might think in a day I'm going to hit um, five constitution. I've tried it, boys. It's... It's not that fast. Trust me. I thought I could make my constitution... Uh, five in one day is not that fast, but you are leveling up your strength and your constitution just by exercising. So exercise a bit, okay? Build up that perfect character. And yeah, when when you're in this, um, you can see now our, uh, our, our bar is going red there, okay? Because we're putting our character under intense pressure. So try not to go into the red with your stamina for various reasons Put, putting a little bit of extra pressure on your character and if you run into any trouble you've got no stamina left you're probably going to die okay okay so let's just cover the crate if you bury a crate guys don't do it at a town okay don't do it at a town we're going to go into the forest quickly i'm going to show you guys how okay boys how to protect your loot very early in the game now you can craft this wooden chest with eight planks, two rope, and two nails. Or if you had my build with advanced engineering, then you only need eight planks and two scrap metal, which is a lot better, a lot quicker, okay? Just, yeah, just a lot quicker. So I can chop down a tree with an axe, 
but all I'm going to do is spawn in 10 planks quickly. Okay, to save us a lot of time. Okay, so now I can craft the chest right there. I can add everything to it and I don't have scrap metal. So I picked up scrap metal in cars because cars gives you scrap metal. Okay, so two scrap metal, there we go. Add the scrap metal, there we've got the chest. Okay, you can press F on it and then tab. And that's just going to select the one that you were using. So if you've got a bunch of crates in your base, and you're not sure which one you're looking at, press F on it, press tab, and it will have that chest selected that you were looking at, okay? And now you can dump all the gear in here that you don't want. And then what we can do is we can craft an improvised, improvised shovel, okay? Which doesn't take a lot either, a plank and a stick and rope. Okay, so we've got the plank and the rope, we just need the stick. Let's cut this down quickly. Okay, now we can craft the shovel. It's not a lot of resources, boys. One stick, one plank, one improvised rope or tree bark rope. Okay, extremely, extremely fast. Now we put, take that in our hands, we go to the chest and we bury it. And now we have a rest because we don't have the strength to finish. Okay, so now the now the chest is buried, okay? If you want to bury it better, put it underneath bush or, you know, a lot of, like, in the forest. Just look for a major cover that will hide this bulge a bit, okay? There's various ways to do it. You can cut out a tree, put it inside a tree, but don't do the glitch method, boys. Don't do the glitch method. Just look for a place that's very covered, and then you can put this down. Okay, all you do now is go to the map, take a screenshot or take notes of where you are on the map. And then what you can do is to find it easier next time you come here, you just place down a blueprint um, of a flag. Okay, so now whenever you enter this area, you'll have this blueprint mark here showing you more or less where the crate is. Okay. And if you want a wildlife spawn point, then you just craft. A shelter. Craft a shelter that works as a spawn point or an improvised bed works as a spawn point. Very, very easy. Okay. Let's see what the last tip is going to be. Okay, survivors, I hope you are ready to take on Scum 0.6 in your stride to become masters of your situation and to adapt and to learn and to become better and to enjoy this game a lot more. Okay, the last tip is don't play with megs. Okay, that's the final tip I can give you. Do not play with megs. Megs shoot very, very big bullets that hurt very, very much. Megs can see you or sense you through walls and even shoot you through walls in the right circumstances. I don't know if this is um, intended by the developers or not, so hopefully it will get safer in the future. But for now, imagine that they are the most advanced Megs that you've ever encountered and they can detect you and see you through walls. Um... And shoot you through the walls okay so once you get detected by them and they start irritating you or they 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 start making you feel you can't move anywhere get out of there wherever you are get out of there don't stay there for the loot get out of there okay so the first important thing about a meg is it's very high it's much higher than you it can see much further than you okay so you want to stay out of its vision cone the second problem is the a lot of places have more than one meg. So if you're working with a bunker, it's not that bad. If you're working with a point of interest like the boot camp or the train yard or the airfield or the military airfield, 
then you then you dealing with multiple makes which can see you at various angles so even if you're looking at a make that doesn't mean another make isn't looking at you okay so you can imagine them having long cones wherever they're looking and as soon as they see you they're going to ask you to stand still and when they ask you to stand still all you can do is press f4 hold up your hands okay and then walk backwards okay but really try and walk walk backwards okay walk backwards slowly and get the hell out of there okay so that's number one so the vision is the first problem sound is connected to stealth the more weight you carry the the faster they're going to hear you the less weight you're carrying or the higher your stealth skill is the longer it's going to take them to hear you with advanced stealth and not a lot of weight on you you can literally walk behind them okay you can literally walk behind them and they won't hear you so as soon as that red light comes on like you guys saw i only looked at the one meg i didn't look at the other meg okay now i have to be careful because although i'm in cover he can step on me okay so i have to be careful if he gets too close to me i'm sprinting i don't care if he kills me with his gun i'm not gonna let him step on you because if the last place that he saw you was close to the bush that you try to hide in he's gonna come and step on top of you and kill you not only that i've been killed by a meg and he crushed all my gear he crushed my guns my armor everything and all my gear was unusable so again if you are prone to raging or getting irritated don't mess with these guys okay so he saw me i'm in a bush um now i don't really want him to detect me again okay and now i can just go from bush to bush okay i can go from bush to bush and if i'm behind them then i can take a few risks i don't really want to run because i've got their vision to deal with okay but as, as long as I'm in a bush, I'm fine. If the bush is big enough, I don't really need to crouch down. Okay, I can stand in the bush like this. So although you can see me, that doesn't mean that the maid can see me. Okay, because the bush acts as cover. So the bush is your best friend regarding a Meg's vision. And then stealth and your weight is your best friend regarding how far he can hear you from. Okay. So as you can see, you guys can see me, but he can't see me. And he's white. His lights are white. He's friendly. I don't need to worry about him. Oh my word. Okay. That wasn't on purpose, guys. That was his route. That was his route. He almost killed me. Okay. But you can see that guy's lights are red. I don't want to really mess with him okay and i don't want to run because he's probably going to hear me so you want to jog as most as you can or you want to run okay so he saw me in that bush okay so now i want to get into the bush again and you don't want him to step on you guys if he comes too close to you you run you run boys do not let this guy step on you do not let this guy step on you, all right? Okay, so what we've learned is that is the end of his route, okay? That there is the end of his route. So we don't want to go for these great, great loot spots right now. And we don't want to go for it when that Meg looks at us because that Meg, both these Megs are in, in uh, alert stages so if you want to play right get, get out of here right now because if these guys see me they're going to start shooting me through walls okay and now i have to time both of these i have to time both of these that's going to be very difficult okay he's not looking at me but he is looking at me and this is where people get impatient, guys. This is where people get impatient. This is normally where they die. Okay? 
because they don't want to wait. Then they die, and they try and get back to their bodies, and they die again. Okay? Because now they respawn in the sector, they lose, they lost all their fame points. You know, it's just not fun. So I'm going to jog now, because I haven't got a lot of weight on me. And then I'm going to sprint. I'm a little bit um, in a hurry here. I'm going to sprint. I'm going to take out my bow. Because with the bow, puppets are a problem. And then I want to wait for him to relax. While I see that red light, I don't want to do anything. Even if you want to go lie down. Okay, go lie down. Just don't move until he forgets about you. Okay, and now you can loot. And as you saw, that was a bit comfortable, uncomfortable. So you can always change your angle, you know, that you're coming in from. And then you can loot all these, then you can loot all these great places. Okay. All this fantastic loot you can loot. But as soon as they start putting too much pressure on you, get out of there, boys. You know, get out of there. Where the heck are the puppets? Is this our official servers look? Goodness gracious. Okay, I want to close the door. And I want to get away from him. Okay. And then as soon as I'm done looting this place, I want to get out of here. Okay? I want to get out of here. And as soon as both of them aren't looking at me, that is a fantastic time to get away. If they see you now, just run. Just run. If they shoot you by mistake, you know, fall on the ground, bandage yourself, and don't move because you're going to sit with a serious, serious bleeding injury. Guys, if you found this, these top 10 tips helpful, do me a favor and smash that like button. If you've learned something that you haven't learned before, or haven't thought before, click that like button as well. And if you want to see and learn everything about scum from a guy that spends most of his time doing research, click that sub button. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I hope you will be able to enjoy the game a little bit more. Because knowledge is power. Cheers.